Welcome to a video on upgrade targets for the next few weeks. It's George from Fantasy Take TV. And for this video, we'll go through defenders, midfielders, and forwards, sort by average. And you'll start off with the forwards. So at this point of the year, it's coming into round six. So it is upgrade season. So that means you must be upgrading. So if you're thinking of doing like a double down or a triple down, you know, waiting for next week, I think you, you want to get points on the field now you want to get that rookie to a premium and get that 50 60 maybe more uh point buffer this week because every point counts and it's tough to tough to make up ground especially for me a little bit behind um behind the eight ball slightly using a few too many trades so regardless um as you can see the top trade outs here like a cam mckenzie ginby and you know baker mostly traded out here top three trade outs and that's probably the three that i'll be getting rid of Personally, I think you can hold Baker. I think Ginby, the risk with him is he's, he has an 80 break even. And if they manage him somewhat again, because they've got, I just looked at the injury list, they've got 14 on the injury list, so you might actually have to play. Um, we see these rookies all the time, you know, hit a wall. Like we saw Rochelle last year, you know, hit a bit of a wall and get injured. So it can happen. Even Dacos slowed down a bit this time of the year, but he picked back up was actually battling a foot issue as well so these it's not uncommon you know cam mckenzie's probably hit a bit of a wall came on the sub had no impact even with decent mid time so at least baker i think baker's a few more you know must be sixth or seventh year or something for him so i have a bit more confidence in him going forward to make a bit more money um but gimme does look good though but yeah the risk is that he might get managed and whatnot so i think baker you can hold and the other two with the high break evens i wouldn't be too upset even if they did well when you got rid of him because yeah you're moving the team forward now and they seem the most likely trade out so yeah we'll start off getting to the list now so we'll look at the forward so jeremy cameron just been unreal is this sustainable i don't think so um i wouldn't be going jeremy cameron but if you started him i think that's great i think you you can't pay 565 for a key forward but you wouldn't like it looks like he'll be a top six forward but again key forward history of hamstrings a bit older regardless probably the a top three player in the comp hard to argue that you could even argue number one now she's all we all have i think at this point so there's no real point discussing him uh hopefully he continues to the same role and doesn't slow down but doesn't doesn't really look like it battling a bit of a thumb issue at the moment so hopefully he gets up dunks i think we all have but yeah he's a fine target if you don't have him 570 uh taranto if you don't have taranto he's been a great starting pick so he's still a good price Liam Baker I touched on last week, I think, when looking for Doherty replacements, or the week before, I can't even remember. Uh, no, it would have been last week, actually. Uh, my issue is Short is probably back this week, and if Short floats back a little bit, I think that eats into Baker a little bit, but I really like him this year, and if there was no Jaden Short, I'd actually be a lot more confident in him, because I've watched him quite closely this year, and he just gets a lot of ground ball. Um, good contested player, so... and they. You know, he earns every touch, basically, but that does make it hard. And his time on ground's really high as well. I think it's pushing 90, but uh, doesn't not really one for cheap, easy ball. He earns a lot of it, but I guess that's good for contested ball. So, look, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he continues 100+. plus. I want to see what happens when Short comes back to, for a bit more confidence. So, although I think they'll be Short more, more up the ground, uh, I can see Short playing down back at times. Now, Zebel is... Uh, do you still want Zeeble if you don't have him? Well, apparently Aaron Hall is knocking on the door, according to Alistair Clarkson. I wouldn't touch Zeeble if you don't have him. If you have him, you probably got him cheap and you're happy. Um, just monitor to see how that works out. So I still think he go close to being a top six forward. Uh, we'll be thereabouts, maybe like your seventh to tenth range. And it's probably enough. Um, maybe a buy flip if, if you've got trades to see how he goes. And a bit older, so don't know if he'll slow down or not. Gordon still looks like, looks like a fine target. CBAs will be probably average like 45 for the year. So I'm confident enough in Gordon that he'll be a solid pick. Something I probably should have mentioned um, with the forwards is Petrarca just missed out. So he could be getting it in round 12 or uh, after round 11. And also Sam Walsh had 39% CBAs and we saw probably more in the back half of last year, Walsh was getting less CBAs and I... That was probably more a function of, you know, they wanted to play, you know, Hewitt was really good at CBAs, 
um, Crips, obviously, Mac, uh, Mac CBAs, and then, you know, you got the Chera and Hewitt in there as well. No, sorry, Chera and Kennedy. And Kennedy started the year really, really well, so like, it was hard to take him out as well. Whereas um, Walsh can effectively play wing or that link-up player. So, um, yeah, a victim of his own versatility. So I think it's... Um, I'm a little hesitant to go on forwards at this point just because if Walsh and Petrarca do get DPP in round 12, you definitely want both of them. So, yeah, it's a tough one. So I am quite hesitant, but do you just take the value now and, you know, you probably make up the points from now till the, that round and, you know, maybe they don't even get DPP. So it's a bit of a tricky one and it's a bit of guesswork involved. So, um yeah, I don't know. It, it's put some doubts into me considering butters, but as I spoke about, I probably need to go more durable route. Dixon is a no, but playing well. A bit more ruck time. Dylan Moore's a star, but there's no CBAs. It's You can see him regressing to like a 90 in a losing team, but you know if, if we saw that CBAs spike, which I don't think will happen just because they're trying all these kids in there, as in consistently it won't happen. Happened last year and they dropped back in the last two weeks, then he's one that you could look at if we get some indication. I think Rosie's a great target if you don't have him. And then Butters, 490k. So Butters, break even. So he scored 140, has West Coast this week too. Break even of 50. So you probably, if you're going this week, it's if you're going to get him, it's it's this week because you'll probably go up you know, with a ton, 20k odd, 25k, whatever it is. So we know, I think he's done... With, he did... He would have done 100 plus with like 40% CBAs last year if he didn't have a few excuse games. Like he was sick one game, copped a few knocks, but that's butters. So it can be a bit of a roller coaster, but the ceiling is massive. And this 146 probably boosted. He kicked a goal um, in at the end while it was close. So got a stack of points for that. So slightly inflated score for him. But look, he could be one of the best picks of the year for sure. I think we can all see that. Do they Do the CBAs stay at 60 to 65%? I think so, but it wouldn't surprise me if some weeks, a bit like Rosie, like how good, you know, Rosie's so good, but, you know, his CBA's dropped to 40% one week yeah, the um, a few weeks ago. So I can see Butters getting a few games of like 30, 40% CBA. So I can see some games him getting 70%. Just, you know, they got Wines in there. They got Horn Francis. They got Drew, who they seem to like in there. So I can see them dropping here and there, but um, for the most part, I think they'll be much higher. You know, I think if I had to guess, probably 55, I think is fair um but he looks good so they'd be silly to really drop it so look if you're happy to take on the durability risk no soft tissue which is good i fully endorse a butters pick so go go for it go with your gut cogs is an interesting one i think the the two things working against cogs is one gws are no good and two he's a little bit older like you can see like rose in butters your know, fifth year coming to their prime gordon third year Still very young though, um, you know Dunkley in Toronto mid twenties, whereas you know Cogs, you know these guys are all for Richmond. Are, I don't know they'll try and make finals obviously, which is fine, but they're not going to change too much with Toronto. Um, I don't think they'll change too much with Cogs at the Giants. They kind of have to play him in the midfield, but yeah, I think the age and the team factor works against him a little bit. So. For me, he's a pass. I think at 480k, he's still a... What's his break even? He's still like a decent option. 108. So the numbers are still there in terms of like disposals. The um, the, the uh, role is there as well. So he's a fine option. And then you go down the list. I'll probably just skip him. Just take 20% on. Just take him on, I think. Never plays 22. So he'll probably be a pass for me. But he, he won't be far off. You got Heaney, who's... Uh, I don't think you can go there. He hasn't looked great this year apart from this game. Um, there's not much else here. I think another one you want to make room for is Darcy Cameron. I probably should sort by average. Darcy Cameron is one you want for the right cover for the rest of the year. So I think you just back him in. Interrupted preseason, but looked all right. Bit unlucky with the knee. Um, so I think you back him in to play the last 12 games or whatever it is and be your right cover for the rest of the year. So I'm keen. I'll probably get him the week he comes back because his break even is 60 so uh, yeah he might start slow but I think you just want him while the break even's low so that 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 is the forwards so we'll touch on the defenders now 
interesting that uh, Dawson's M1 at the moment. It's pretty funny. So who are you targeting at this point? So Dawson, I guess, will touch on the defender list. So Clayton Oliver is probably a bit much at this point because I got Clayton Oliver in for 700, but I was doing a correction a few weeks ago. So I don't think it'll hurt too much. And the other, the option I was going to go alternative one was Sicily, who dropped a, a truckload of cash the past few weeks and will drop again, likely with 150 break even. So whoever I was getting was dropping anyway. So I thought I might as well get Oliver, but it's going to be, if you're getting Oliver for 700, you're probably going to hurt your upgrades in the next two or three weeks. So like it might mean you cut an Ashcroft or a Setterfield instead of a, I don't know, McKenna or a... So McKenna can probably go with Ashcroft, so maybe a better example would be like a, a Wilmot in two or three weeks or something. So it might hurt your upgrades there. So just bear that in mind. If you can, I think it's okay to get him, but if you map it out and it's hurting your upgrades, you get the pen and paper out, then I probably wouldn't go there, especially with, you know, he won't go that much higher than 700, but the, the fixture is quite frightening with him, the next three. So, and I think the one after that's Hawthorne. So he's one you want when you can hopefully if you don't have him he drops a little bit for you this week maybe gets to 680 and then you grab him so yeah as long as it doesn't hurt your future upgrades uh davies uniac is whatever 150 break even no reason to pick him this week if you have him great though neil what's his break even 90 so i think neil will probably be around this price we know he's got the ceiling to go nuts his first four games are pretty subpar like below his 2022 20, average but this game against North, he just went nuts. You could see within the first five seconds he was switched on. Bond's a good target if you don't have him. Miller's a great target. Um, how much weight do you give the hamstring in the preseason? Uh, it's pretty much the only injury he's had for quite a few years. So I think you give him a bit of leeway, I think. But it depends how you want to spin it. But yeah, he has a nice fixture. has around 13 by. And you know he's a pretty safe top eight. Probably top four mid. So he's a big tick if you want. Took tackling a lot as well. We remember early last year, he had two games where he didn't tackle at all, which was strange. But now I think his tackle numbers would be about seven or eight a game, something like that. So a bit more confidence that nothing's wrong at the moment. Where I think last year, we're potentially you know, questioning whether he was going okay early. But yeah, he's a great target. You get a 40K discount on his starting price. Uh, Libba, again, a bit older now, so probably pass. Sarong's looks really good. The Tog's up, the CBA's up. So I think this is definitely real. 112 average. I think he's closer to like a 107, 108. And the uh, the Dockers have had a pretty easy run. So uh, he's a, a... I think he'll be thereabouts. He, I could see people picking him as like your M7, M8 at some point. Uh, I'll probably pass, but he looks fantastic. And yeah, certainly a better pick than Brayshaw this year. Um... I think uh, the conservativeness in me will, you know, I'll take like a Zach Merritt when he gets off or pay a little bit more for Took at this point and then probably focus on the cheap, de the defenders that are coming down like a Sinclair or Sicily. That's probably what I'm thinking at the moment. So um, that's that. Goey, I don't know what was, what was wrong with him. And Pendlebury, I think you just admire and sit afar from Pendlebury. Not pick him, but yeah, it's great to see the King play well. Uh, Dunk spoke about so Laird is a great target. Me personally, the bias in me, I'm taking Laird over Took. Um, I guess Crows are playing a bit quicker now, might hurt him a little bit, but I think as winter comes, Crows are a better team this year as well. Him fitting out to Dawson, leading the score involvements. I think we joked on the podcast. I think was it I can't remember if it was JD or Eno saying he's getting all these score involvements because he's dishing it out to Dawson. So, which is probably true. So. I think Laird's a great target. If you're at all concerned with him with the, the 50 in round one, I wouldn't be. I think that's a one-off. And, yep, I would grab him if you can. You get a very big 65K discount on him. Uh, Merritt, I'm a big fan of Merritt. I'm not seeing him talked about much, like on Big Footy and whatnot. And SES, when I look at there, not much interest in him. But I think in a Discord, uh, people pretty hot on Merritt. Just the back half of last year, 89 break even. Dons look like they're better. Might be a tag. I think he plays Port in two weeks and he copped a tag from them last year. So I do wonder maybe it's better to wait and for like two or three weeks. Um, regardless, I still like him though. I still think like this price, he gets cheaper every year than this, but 
I think last year the only reason why he got to like 520k was he copped a head knock and scored 50 like he didn't he barely touched the ball for the whole game after he copped the head knock so that's literally the only reason why he got so low otherwise he wouldn't have gone lower than like your 540 550 um anyway that's my view so that's what I saw last year so yeah I think Merritt's a great target I think he's top eight uh, Tom Green, I think if you don't have him, you probably take him on at 37%. I think he'll be a fine, like an M7, M8. Wood, we're not touching, but he's he's just ticking along nicely. I'm quite high on Petrarca, and he might get forward status, but we see him post buy. He hit his straps. He usually hits his straps. This sort of period between now and the buys can go through the motions a bit. Last year, we saw a bit of knee soreness, a bit of the flu week off after the buy and just goes bang flies home so we've seen that two years in a row so if he's at a very nice low uh, low 500s price within the next seven or eight weeks i'll snap him up for sure um but yeah i guess the uh argument is maybe spending a bit more time forward this year so do you actually want him or not i will see how it plays out the cbas are still fine but he's one we'll keep an eye on Sam Walsh is one you could look at. I'd like the CBAs to be up. I owned him last year with not great CBAs, and I, he was playing through back soreness, which has um, which came into the he came into the preseason with or carried with him, and yeah, affected his round one preparation. So, not too sure if the CBAs were hurting him or the back issue, but I think it was a bit of both because. Just watching, when you roll up from the CBAs, you don't get that first possession chance. Or like When you roll up from half forward, you don't get the first possession chance. You miss out on tackles, so the tackles were down. So if his CBAs don't jump up, I'm probably not interested. But if he's a forward status, I like don't even care what the CBA, CBAs are. You just grab him. Josh Kelly is one. I jumped off. So um, Giants are bad. The CBAs are still there, so there's no reason why he can't do 110, really. I uh, had a bit of a down game this week, so part of the reason why that was, I think the narrow ground does not help the outsideish players at Norwood. It's like the skinniest ground I think I've ever seen, so probably didn't help him. So I think he'll be fine. Not one I'm targeting, but if you have, he's, he should be a reasonable pod. Um, given his history, I think, um, yeah, if I trade him in, it's, it can be a bit of a stressful own. So he's one where I just let it go. McRae's doing the 104 at the moment. Uh, I don't think you can go there. I own him in fantasy and an absolute nightmare watching him. It's just consistently subpar. I don't think he's an option this year. I think it's CBAs are dropped plus. I think just natural regression from him. And he's, yeah, he's running out game Early in the year, he's running out games well. The past few weeks, he's run it out poorly, which was happening last year. I think that's too many red flags. Kelly's a no. Mitchell's a no. Battling back issue, apparently playing through it road crouch probably a no more of your fantasy type and Trelaw's a no so you got uh, Noah Anderson could be okay not sure just think it's unnecessary risk and uh, Callum Mills is probably a no this year just Mr. Fix it I think he played like key defense this week or something like that um, Danger's been pretty good but uh, not relevant anymore but yeah glory days and then the Probably the last one I can see here. Oh, there's two here. So you've got Brayshaw and, and Jack Steele. So Jack Steele, 163 break even. So he had the broken clavicle. So it feels like he's coming back a little early. That looks like a, I don't know, like a six-week job at least, I would have thought. I'm not too sure. But um, well, apparently he's fine now, whatever. So I don't know how the hell that's healed up. So we'll see how he goes. He's one where like he has a first buy. He might be a great one to target after the buy. You know, Saints are winning. Um, we know his ceiling is, you know, one of the best in the league. Hasn't really looked like showing it, though. Uh, contested numbers were down last year, even before he did the injury. So he might be an okay, like, your M7, M8 with a bit of upside to storm home. Um, he looked okay in his first two games that he played, I thought. It just didn't score super well. Fantasy, I think he did 110, super coach 93, so... I wouldn't be too alarmed by that. So I think he's one to keep an eye on. And Andy Brayshaw, this is um, this is shocking. 90 average. Feels like he's doing worse than that. So I own him in fantasy. And actually, like my fantasy team sucks. But like he's a nightmare. I just thought, said he's fitter. Um, he said he was fitter than he's been. And then Lumio says he's been carrying an injury all year just the other day. So he must have picked it up right before round one or something or in round one. We don't even know what the injury is. They're just saying he's 
playing through something. I imagine most players are, but for him to be singled out is a bit of a concern. So, yeah, don't pick players that are playing through injury. End of story. Oops. Accidentally clicked on better. And I did it again. They banned me from promotions because I did too many of them. Anyway, so that's my take on those. So... Uh, mids I'm targeting, Merit and Took are the main two. I think we miss Parish as well. Uh, where's Parish? Yeah, I'll go over Parish quickly. A uh, few people in Discord bringing in Parish. Looking at who's like the top eight, I think he'll be thereabouts. I don't think he will be top eight, but I think he'll be like close enough to be a solid pick. Um, the car fish he had last year scares me a bit. Someone with low trades. Um, a bit worrying so yeah the numbers with Parrish look pretty good on paper like when you check footy wire but I think the tackles are down that might be a function of Setterfield coming in having seven tackles a game and then uh, his marks are also down a little bit as well oh no sorry the marks are up so there's more cont more contested stuff contested rates really good contested ball 14 a game really really strong getting 30 a week in his in his sleep basically so I think Parrish is fine. He's not for me though. I'm more your. Um, I want Par I want Mera. I want Took. I want Neil, and then I'll probably go for like a Petrarca or Steel as the final one. I think that's sort of what I'm what I'm looking at personally. Um, but Parrish is one that could go on a nice run. But yeah, he's also had a pretty easy fixture, so there's enough there for me to say no to Parrish. But I think he'll be okay. And we'll look at the defenders. So I think Dacos, like this is still value. The break even 75. So I think you gotta you gotta get him in if you don't have him. It's it's the worst player to not own in the league by far. It could be even Dawson up there. So Dawson's technically still value if you think he's gonna average what he's been doing in the midfield. Uh what does he do in the midfield? We've only seen two weeks, but I think he's gonna score well. I think he does you know, the score involvements, uh, you know, you kick inside, you hit a target inside 50, you get so many points for that. He tackles, contested marks, it's just incredible. So, um, yeah, I can't speak highly enough of Dawson. Do you pay 655 for him? Probably not if you, if it's hurting future upgrades, though. Similar with Took, I guess. Um, Sard, if you have Sard, I think you just hold. Um, I guess the uh, hamstrings kind of scared people off now, and it has scared me off for sure, but I think he'll be a nice pod if he doesn't redo the hamstring or anything. Might even play this week. It was just a bit of tightness. So it might be just a one-weeker. Now, Lloyd and Baker, I think we touched on Baker before. So with Jake Lloyd, we're well, speaking about this on the podcast. I think this is real personally, but I don't know for sure. And for that reason, I'll probably look elsewhere. So I think this week I'm bringing in Jack Sinclair now that Merritt is um is suspended. As you can see, like Rampy and Blakey. Blakey's probably their main distributor, to be honest. Um, but Lloyd's been solid back there, both getting even kick-ins. So we saw Lloyd's done like he's done 120, he's done 107, he's done 108. He's done like 100 plus heaps of times. So... It might have just been an, an anomaly last year. I think that we were thinking that they're just moving the ball quicker with Don Pike sort of coming to the club a few years ago and, you know, changing them more aggressive off halfback, you know, more down the corridor. You know, you saw Jake Lloyd of old, Mark, chip sideways, you know, chip, you know, it's the Holt play, chip through the corridor, hit those 45 kicks. Um, still a little bit of that. I still think he's still very stop-start when I watch him play. But he's... I don't know what it is. He just seems to be playing well, getting more of the ball. So um, it's a hard one. I think he'll be, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he's top six and it wouldn't surprise me if he's better than Sicily, as silly as, silly as that sounds. I'm probably still back in Sicily from here though. Um, that I might look silly saying that um, Lloyd over Sicily, but I still, yeah, I'm still back in Sicily from here. I think he's not too bad, but I think you could just pay like, I don't see him getting much higher than 550 on a regular basis for the rest of the year. So He's one you could look at after his buy, I think. Um, just making sure that he's going to continue this form. But like all these Sydney, even Florent. I think Florent had a role change a little bit as well. So it doesn't seem sustainable to me, but I'm not too sure. So I'll, I'll look elsewhere. But I think I think the pick will more likely work than not. You got Will Day. So Will Day is an interesting one. Oh, Tom Stewart as well. And Stewart's a fine target. Uh, what's his break even? 120 so he's probably going to be 600 he'll have a spike game maybe and go to like 630 640 but um, might have a few like 100 110s which is perfectly fine still 
and just sort of hover at the price. So yeah, Stewart's a solid target this week. Uh, it's annoying he went up like what do you go up 28k this week. Uh, Will Kiki key defender, he's a no no kick in. So but still, I think yeah, just admire playing really well. Probably all Australian at the moment. Probably could be captain over Steele, but um, love Steely too. Will Day is an interesting one. So his last three have been midfield, and the CBAs went up. I think it was 80, was it 139 where that went to 80%? I can't remember. So he could be a 70, 80% CBA mid. He's the main guy in there. Annoyingly, like Warple got a big bump because of this suspension. So it is what it is. But after trading him, but um, it's whatever. Um, Do you go for day? Well, yeah, three were an average one, one, four. And two of them were in bad losses. One to Geelong, the other two. Sydney, so he's proven he can score bad in losses. He looks fantastic. Strong strong inside game, strong outside game. Uh, not super strong inside, but looks really good in there. Like, moves well, good in traffic. Um, Yeah, probably going to get a big payday. Oh, no, he's already signed, I think. So I wonder how much he got. Would have been a nice one, I think. Is he better than, your, like, your Sicily and Sinclair? Uh, I honestly don't know. He could be. He could be, for sure. And he's pretty cheap. So I think he's a fine target. I think he'll be there about to your top six. So I think he's fine. I guess the durability with him, you know, subbed out twice last year, like rolls ankles. Seems to get concussed a lot. Seems to put himself in harm's way a fair bit too, which is a little bit nerve-wracking. But I think he'll score enough to be like a top 10 defender. Cox, you don't go. And then you got... The next two of Sicily and Sinclair. So these two, just because of what they did last year, and there's been a little bit of excuses as to why they've slightly underperformed. So I think Sinclair's been put in the midfield more without steel, and that's seen him drop a little bit. Seems to score better off half back, but also he's lost kick ins to Wangany Miller. I think it seems to be a 50 50 split, whereas I think Sinclair was about 70 30 with others last year. So might lose six to nine points a game, which is a bit annoying, but I still think he can do uh, uh, 105-ish maybe. Got that high ceiling of, of halfback too. So hopefully with still back this week is what uh, Ross said. It says he's a test on the injury list, but Ross said he'll play. So hopefully he comes back for Sinclair's sake. I'll probably go Sinclair this week. Um, especially if Steele's back, I like that. And he had that one game where he had 90 DT, 60 SC, just bad ratio. He's averaging 28 touches a game. Watching him play, he's still he's always on the move. He always wants the ball. He gets involved in chains, run around the back, whatever. Um, he loves the pill, so that gives him a bit more confidence. So I'll go Sinclair this week. I think his break even is 114. Have a look. 113. So he's a fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's one I'd probably rather wait one or two weeks on. I think Carlton give up to defenders from memory. Um, yeah, I'll go. I wanted to go midfielder. Like a perfect world, probably go Took. Didn't have the money. Wanted to go Merritt. Next option, Sinclair Butters. Go Sinclair. Just less injury history. I think Sinclair's only injury history in the past three or four years. He had a one week hamstring, um, like a very minor one. Like only missed a week. So. That's okay. I think we'll give him a pass for that. He played 22 last year. And also Saints are better, so maybe more points for the Saints. And then Sicily, with 150 break even, I don't think you have to go there. Plays in Tassie, so the excuses for Sicily, I think, were round four, he played on Jeremy Cameron, full blown key position, just got smashed, still managed to sit a 70-odd score. And then last week against at Norwood Oval, you'd think an interceptor, you know, cut off space a bit, you know, less space um, for the opponent to find room in the forward line. So maybe that's better for intercept markers, not too sure. Maybe more space is better. I actually don't know. It seems to work for Stewart at the small GM HBA stadium. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty hard for him to find cheap marks um, that game. I just thought a lot of that game was, you know, just a lot of bombing it forward. We saw Warple bomb it over and over again, even down back, you know, taking the long option. Um, just quite a hard to find you know, find a mark down back when the ground is so small. So last two weeks wasn't great. He's still averaging, he's played, he hasn't played that good. He's still averaging 98. So I can definitely see upside here and he's not going to play on Jezza every week. So next week, he, either next week or the week after, I will definitely be getting all going well. 
uh, we'll definitely get Sicily in. So did 110 in the uh, before the ACL and before I think he played two games forward anyway. So before that did 110 last year did 113. This year I can see him doing 105 to 110 still. So I'll give him a tick and um, look he could regress a little bit. I'm not sure. I guess the concern is the kickins. They seem to be happy to share them. Give 10 or 11 to Hardwick. Regardless, um, yeah, he he he's a competitor. He'll he'll want the ball more. Um, yeah, I just I see him improving. So, and that's that. And then you got a few others here. So you got your Mason Redmond. So Redmond a bit up and down. Scores is he downhill? Excuse me, downhill skier. I'm not too sure. Scores well in much better in wins and losses. I just don't trust him like the other guys that have a full proven year or two or three of scoring history. I think Jack Sinclair, the back half of 2021, full 2022. So I think that's enough confidence to stick with him. And then, yeah, Redmond, just a bit up and down. Uh, honestly, like I don't know if I'm going to get a 140 or a 70 from him. So, And I think a lack of, a lack of games at Marvel Stadium coming up, which is Essendon's home, so it's probably not great either. So he's a pass for me. Did consider it, and then you got your, like your budget options. So I think you're better off going your Sinclair while he's dropped, Sicily while he's dropped. Uh, I don't mind Lloyd. I think it's uh, probably better to go your Sicily and Sinclair if you don't have them at this stage, though, just to be a tad safer in my opinion. And then yeah, Ed Richards just Johannesson has taken four kick ins a game down back now, so. I think uh, I think uh, Richards will do a hundred easily in the right setup, but Bevo's just mix match nonstop. Like, is it Crozier? Is it Johannesson? Daniel goes there for parts in games. Just it's a mess. You know, Dale was up and down. It's, Dale is the one that's been killed the most here. What's Dale doing? Eighty six. Feel like he's been doing worse than that, but had that one big game. So I don't think you can go to a dogs defender unfortunate because I think Richards is still doing 91 somewhat weathering the storm of low kick-ins and ball sharing so a bit of a shame rate him a lot so those are my targets so again Cicely Sinclair my preference for both ideally you can probably wait a week um I'll probably go yeah I'm going Sinclair this week just because of um merit suspended so a bit of a pain and then you look at the Ruckman um so if you got you know if you've you want to get English, obviously. Again, you get him in for 700. His durability is so poor that it's likely something will happen sooner rather than later. Like two incidents happened in the preseason and three or four incidents last year. You just fingers crossed and you cash him out for... Uh, where's Gorney? Yeah, so Gorn had that zero game. Might ease him in. It's 220 break even. So he'll drop heaps. Yeah, so what's he projected? 104, 78. We're not gonna probably not gonna go 78. So yeah, he'll get to low 500s unless he goes absolute berserk on Samson Ryan and plays this week, and Ben Miller, which could definitely happen. So if something happens to uh, English, I'll probably go down that route to Max Gorn. Although Darcy looks very good at the moment, so I did trade him, but at least we got Tim English in. And uh, Grundy's probably got to go. What's his break even? 67 you can probably hold a week even if they play together might make a little bit of money and you can prioritize elsewhere but other than that after this week you definitely you know they got yeah the ben miller matchup in the ruck so hopefully get some points there maybe they use him more this week to ease gorn back in but after that i would be jumping off grundy and then wits is like you don't touch wits at all i think this year unless he like drops a bit and we get an injury late in the season or something so i think it's english Darcy, Marshall, and Gorn as the top four. And you want English and probably Darcy's two. Probably three will be Gorn, maybe four Marshall. I'm not too sure. So out of those four, I think you just want one of those guys. So uh, that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was at all helpful for you. So I guess we'll wrap it up again. So four targets. I like Butters, but I'd be cautious just because of... Um, I would plan for Darcy Cameron, and I'd also plan for Walsh maybe one of Walsh or Petrarca if they if they get it again we're just it's a bit of guesswork here but obviously um I think they'd both get it uh sorry Petrarca was really close and Walsh would probably get it now if his role continues but we're not sure what happens so I guess Butters is a cheap one there and then yeah be careful as I said
Midfielders, I think I have the most confidence in Took and Merritt personally, but if you like a cheap option, if you like your Sarong, if you like your Parish, completely fine. And then down back, I think your Cicely Sinclair, if you have them. Uh, you could still go Dawson because he's going, he's low break even, but it might hurt you a little bit um, with your future upgrades. So I guess, yeah, your Sinclair and Cicely are the two for me. And if you like Will Day, I think Day is a pretty good one too. He'll be thereabouts. And I actually don't mind Jake Lloyd, but as I said, might be better to go the players with the better record over the past 18 months. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. And if you have any comments, let me know and I'll try to get to them. So we'll see you guys in the next one.